Hi there, here's our first class on Chomsky's generative grammar. The first thing that I'd like to say is that we will be deriving, that's the first technical term, derive, derivation, we'll derive a very short sentence, I do like tennis. Now if you're not familiarized with Chomsky's approach to the analysis of sentences, you will initially feel that this is all Greek to you. The idea of starting with sentence analysis right away is for you to see how sentences are derived or analyzed and then we will in this way create a state of what is this. So there will be a lot of questions that will then be answered and we will do that little by little so that you can feel confident about your understanding of sentence analysis from a Chomsky perspective. So we need you to be patient and to put a lot of attention on the kind of analysis that we are going to conduct in a minute. Also, it is important for you to know that we will resort to a lot of technical terms, technical terminology, which again will not be clear from the very beginning, but it will become clearer and clearer as we move on. So we will say that Sentence analysis is represented by means of label tree diagrams. So here's a tree, only that the tree with its branches is represented here by means of lines. So the lines are the branches of a tree. And it is also important to say that, of course, this is all a metaphor. And this tree has been uprooted. So it's like upside down, right? So it's an uprooted tree that has been turned upside down to show the rule governed, that's also a technical term, rule governed hierarchical structure of sentences. It's also important to know that we will analyze sentences from bottom to top for reasons that will be clearer in the future. So off we go. The verb like is the head of the verb phrase like tennis, a phrase that is made up by two constituents, a head and complement. The head is like, the complement is tennis. So in saying that there is a head, what we are saying is that there is a function and the complement is also a function. So we will have functions as we used to have in traditional grammar approaches. We have heads and complements, those are functions, and we have categories, verb and noun, that is like and tennis respectively. So when you put two categories together, they, there will be a relationship between them and they will have a function within the phrase. So the next step is called merger. We put a head and a complement together, verb like plus tennis complement, and we form a phrase. Now our phrase will be a verb phrase, not a noun phrase. So what I'm saying is that there are two constituents and the head, the verb, is the one that determines the nature of the phrase. Heads in English are always on the left and complements are always on the right. The reason why this is the case is that English is a head first language. What is that? Head first. Languages are either head first or head last. That is, the heads are either on the right or on the left. So English is a head first language where first means left and this means that you will be saying things like like tennis rather than tennis like. There are other languages such as Japanese and what we know about Japanese is that Japanese is a head last language. So the head will be on the right, not on the left. This is what we call a parameter. That is, according to Chomsky, there are important differences 
between languages, one of which is the parameter. That is, languages vary parametrically in a binary fashion. What is a binary fashion? Or what is binarity? Binarity means that there are only two options. That is, it's either head first or head last. There is not a zero option. There is not a third option or a fourth option. It's binary. It's just two options. So, the difference between English and other languages, as far as the head parameter is concerned, is that English is head first and other languages, such as Japanese, will be head last. So let's go back to our phrase. We got the verb again that functions as the head and we have the complement. The verb like is the head, the complement is tennis and we form a phrase via merger operation. The phrase is a verb phrase so we have a whole other layer of analysis. So we go from the constituents, verb and noun, head and complement, and we put them together and we form a phrase. There is a verb phrase. Now, a whole other aspect of what we will call universal grammar, that is to say a theory that will account for the grammars of all languages. So, as we have just seen, there are parametrical binary variations across languages. As we said before, English is head first and there are other languages that are head last. That's a parameter. However, languages also have principles that pertain all languages. So, a principle is a truth about all languages in the world. A principle pertains all languages and parameters vary in a binary fashion across languages. Again, you get the head parameter, head first or head last. We have already talked about that. Now let's talk about principles. One of the principles of language or languages of universal grammar is that all phrases should have a head. And that principle is called the headedness principle. Headedness. All phrases have a head. So when we put two things together, we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a verb phrase, or we're gonna have a tense phrase, as we will soon see, or a complementizer phrase, or a determiner phrase. We're gonna have different types of phrases. So all languages have phrases, and all phrases have heads, and this is universal hence universal grammar, so it's a principle that pertains all languages, and then we have binary variations. So let us quickly review some of the things that we have said. There are very important uh, categories and terms that we have resorted to. Again, we have just gotten as far as the verb phrase, the first layer of analysis is concerned, and uh, as you may notice from the, this labeled tree diagram, which again, we go from bottom to top. And unlike traditional grammar, we're going from right to left. As you may have noticed, the tree is like, like inclined, is leaning towards the left, right? So it's a different kind of analysis, visually speaking. And there are reasons why we do this and we will discuss them in the near future. But what I wanted to say is that today we have just uh, analyzed a very short phrase, the verb phrase like tennis. And the reason why that is the case is that we're not concerned with like analyzing long sentences right now. We're concerned with our understanding of what is merger, putting two constituents together, the fact that you merge a head and a complement, the fact that head and complement are functions, the fact that verb and noun are categories, the fact that when you put them together, you are abiding by a principle, the headedness principle, and also the important fact that you're making a selection, you're going left, head first, you're not going 
at last, you know, not going right. So we want to stop here because if you have a look at the tree, if we go up upwards and uh, we move to the left, you will notice that the next stage is the merger or phrase, the verb phrase with a T or tense constituent, in this case, do, emphatic do. And then you're going to see something that there is like T prime. And from T prime, there is then T prime merges with the pronoun I to make up a tense phrase. So this phrase is different from our verb phrase and it will take uh, some time to discuss that. So that's basically what we will do next class. We will talk about the fact that there are basically two ways of analyzing or, you know, forming phrases, head complement or head complement specifier, as you can see in the picture. But there is something we will discuss in our next class because it takes quite some time to analyze that. And well, so far, I think it's been great. And uh, we hope you have enjoyed the class. If you have enjoyed our class and you think it's useful, you may want to share it with your fellow students and uh, we will see you soon with the analysis of a whole other phrase a phrase that will have an intermediate projection that is the t prime thing that you see but more about that next class bye bye